Human beings have been modifying our environment for decades and centuries now and quantifying the impact humans have had on the environment has been hard and not accurate so far. Researchers are also studying the oceans and they are trying to assess the impact of the sheer amount of plastic waste that humans have generated and dumped into the environment. In the middle of the world's oceans are large patches of plastic which collect at these specific areas of the ocean due to the nature of oceanic water currents. We've been discovering how organisms that live in the ocean and on the ocean's surface have colonized surfaces of plastic waste and live on them. Now, it also turns out that marine invertebrates that inhabit coastal areas have been found to be living and reproducing on pieces of plastic in the middle of the ocean. These organisms were discovered on pieces of plastic debris that were floating in the large island, so to speak, of plastic in the Pacific Ocean, which is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The scientists say that their in-depth and first-of-its-kind analysis of these coastal organisms that live in the middle of the ocean on plastic have given rise to a new kind of ecosystem and they call it the neopelagic ecosystem. Marine species are known to float throughout the open ocean on pieces of debris with plastic debris providing a surface that persists for a long time. The process by which organisms hitch a ride on floating debris and live on it and reproduce on it is called rafting. It is a widespread phenomenon in the ocean, but it is not well studied or well characterized just yet. Typically, raft material tends to be floating vegetation or pumice stones from volcanic regions. Natural materials, including glass and metal, decompose quickly, relatively, in the open sea. But plastics survive for decades and theoretically we know that they will survive for up to thousands of years. And this plastic that is found in the ocean was originally used in fishing gear to make ropes, fishing nets, floats, etc. The extent to which organisms use floating plastic as their permanent home surface had been unclear until now. To understand how marine organisms thrive and reproduce on plastic waste surfaces, this team collected 105 items of plastic waste across 10 categories. These categories were ropes, nets, buoys, crates, eel traps, fragments of plastic, jugs or buckets, bottles, other household items, and other pieces of plastic, which they call wildcard. These items were at various stages of deformation, including debris that looked relatively new and ones that had likely been floating for many years or even decades in the ocean. Collection was done between November of 2018 and January of 2019, and most pieces of debris were unidentifiable. Some pieces had markings that indicated that the debris were originally from manufacturers from Japan and North America, but a majority of it was unidentifiable. The team found that when they analyzed these samples of plastic debris and organisms that lived on them, the most diversity of species was found on ropes, followed by nets and bottles. They also discovered that nearly all of these species were of Northwest Pacific origin. These included native Japanese coastal species. Now, pelagic or oceanic species, the ones that live in the middle of the ocean, were found on nearly 95% of debris items. But coastal species were present on over 70% of debris, hundreds of kilometers far into the ocean. The organisms coexisted on the same pieces of plastic. So, pelagic organisms and coastal organisms had colonized the same bits of plastic. A total of 484 specimens of invertebrates were collected, with over 80% of them being coastal organisms. These were relatives of animals such as jellyfish, mollusks or arthropods. 
Organisms were found at various stages of their life cycles, indicating that they were actively breeding in these environments and they also were breeding through sexual reproduction. The research team had American, Canadian and Dutch authors and they suggested that the discovery shows that coastal organisms are capable of surviving long term and reproducing on floating pieces of plastic hundreds of kilometers away from the coast in the ocean. They suggest that these findings are evidence of a new type of ecological community that is being created in the ocean, which they call the neopelagic community. Floating waste in the ocean gets moved around through ocean currents, accumulating within gyres or large ocean currents that move in circulatory patterns accompanied by wind currents. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch actually consists of two garbage patches, the western patch of the coast of Japan and the eastern patch of the coast of California. Both these smaller patches are joined together by a section of plastic. Together, this region consists of 90 million metric tons of garbage with over 35 million individual pieces of plastic. While this patch does have the highest density of plastic refuse anywhere in the world, garbage patches are not islands and they're not solid. These garbage patches actually consist of free-floating garbage items with individual pieces floating separately with space around them. The plastic is also not restricted to just the surface. A large part of this garbage patch exists just under the surface floating as microplastics in the water column extending up to 30 meters or 100 feet below the surface. There are a total of five identified garbage patches which exist on the five notable ocean gyres. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the North Atlantic Garbage Patch between North America and Africa, the South Atlantic Garbage Patch between South America and Africa, the South Pacific Garbage Patch which is off the coast of South America, and the Indian Ocean Garbage Patch, which is present off the coast of Africa in the Indian Ocean. A majority of the debris in these patches is discarded fishing gear. And in this study, at the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, these organisms are found to survive with the highest density on surfaces of discarded rope. This new community, the neopelagic community, is now characterized by pelagic species living together with coastal species in the middle of the ocean with coastal species not having developed a reproductive strategy to become permanent colonists. So there is a distinct difference between pelagic species and coastal species and yet they cohabit and reproduce here in the middle of the ocean on plastic. But how long they survive, how they affect other parts of the ocean, how they affect the food chain, all of these things are not clear just yet. This is one of the earliest studies into life settling and colonizing on plastic in the oceans. These long lasting plastic pieces might help marine organisms survive, but they are deadly in the long run in their entirety for the environment. Plastic and microplastics are consumed by marine animals and pass up the food chain, increasing in toxicity. They have also been a major cause of death for several animals that become trapped in them or consume them. It is important to understand how this plastic affects life around us and life in the oceans, which we cannot usually directly observe. In fact, in the future, it is estimated that the total weight of plastic in the ocean will exceed the total weight of all fish by the year 2050.